This is episode 47 of the Boy, Girl, Mom, and Dad podcast, What's in Your Closet with Alden Wicker. Boy, girl, mom, and dad here for the good times and the bad. Gender norms and stereotypes to making sure that the butts are white. Boy, girl, mom, and dad want grown up time, you're going mad. It's a trip, but we'll guide you through with tips and tricks for boys and girls too. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here with me this morning. Uh, it is early for me in LA, but you're East Coast hours and I'm I'm committed to it. I'm up early anyway just because of my um, toddlers. So I think you could probably do a better job of introducing you yourself, but I just want to give some accolades before we get started. Like I'm so excited. Um, Alden is an award-winning journalist and has published pieces in the New York Times, Vogue, Wired, among others, and is a sustainable fashion expert, which we love. She's an accredited author and founder and editor-in-chief of EcoCult, a sustainable and toxin free living guide. Welcome, Alden. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Anything I left out that you want to let the people know about you before we get started? Did you say the name of my book? No, no, I didn't. Okay. So that's that would, actually that would be an important thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> introduce your book. We're going to talk yeah. about it later, but go ahead and introduce it here too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm the author of To Die For, D-Y-E, uh, how toxic fashion is making us sick and how we can fight back. Yes. And if you're new to this podcast, you may not know, but my background is in fashion. And so I actually, um, we'll get into it a little bit later, but I picked up her book because I just love reading. Um, I love reading nonfiction and I love fashion. And when they collide, um, it's just great. And her book is amazing. And I actually um, had started having a conversation with her after I read it. And that's kind of like how what led us to here today. Um, before we get into the episode, every episode we have a tiff that kind of just um, usually my husband Nick is on and it's usually something we might disagree with or something that we both agree on that um, society may like we like to see which way society sways. And so today I thought it'd be fun just to have it on on topic. And so um, I would say a lot of people say I can't find budget friendly items that are eco friendly and human friendly. And so what would you say to that, Alden? Yeah, that's that's not true. And I actually been thinking about this a lot over the past couple of days because um, I, did you see the the Shimu SNL? Skit? Yes. Yeah. yeah. OK, so I have been watching sort of the social media reaction to that skit and there's all these people in the comments of wherever it's being shared being like well like I what am I supposed to do like what am I supposed to buy I can't afford clothing for my kids or myself or um whatever all the brands do it all the brands are bad you know if you're going into Target you're just as bad and to that I say that is categorically untrue um Target actually is like their in-house brands are very sustainable. They have a really strong, strong chemical management program, one of the strongest. And so I tell people like, you can walk into Target and you can get some of their in-house brands for your kids, for yourself, and be pretty confident that, you know, which factory it came from, if you wanted to look it up, it's right there, that um, they've tested it to make sure it doesn't have any toxic chemicals or residues on it. You know, and there are other H and M has a really strong chemical yeah. management program. Um, they're way more sustainable than people give them credit for. And so there are plenty of budget brands which I've listed on Eco Cult under yeah. Easy, Easy and in your book, you talk brand. about it extensively. Yeah, yeah. So like, just because you're paying more, you know, Prada doesn't have Prada is not safe when it comes to toxins. H and M is safe when it pretty safe when it comes to toxins. So um, that's, I think that's just people sort of like excusing their, like, they just like don't want to know about it, or they just want to keep doing what they're doing. And, and uh, they're telling themselves a story so that they they don't have to think about it. They want to live in an ignorance is bliss state. And really, they're like, until it's like that mean girl in school or whatever, like, oh, she's fine. She's not going to be mean to me. She's just mean to everybody else. And then she's finally mean to you. And you're like, oh, yeah, this affects me now. Um, Yeah, yeah, exactly. it's just. It's just wild. And like I loved hearing like, oh, H and M. So I've actually in your book, I've actually like shopped more for the twins at H and M. Not that I didn't before, but I have this like 
I, you know, I have this, it's not even a love hate relationship, I would say, but when it comes to like fast fashion, because my background is fashion, like I want to buy more um, things that are like will last longer. And that's just hard in general, like having kids. So they grow out of things like so fast. And honestly, I buy like a size or two up just so it lasts longer. So I don't have to keep like buying. Um, But I've started shopping H&M more just because um, of your book, honestly. And I remember like my sister had told me that they also had like a somewhat, they still have it like a sustainable, like organic type line too. And they still have it. But, um, and so I sh- will shop that one too. But it just is surprising because, you know, you can spend, you know, $8 on a t-shirt and yeah, they're paying attention to it. So to your point, it's, it's a lie that, um, you can't find things that are budget friendly. Yeah. What would you say to someone who says like, okay, but I, the things that I buy that are like better for you, the planet and better for humanity, um, don't last long. They don't last long. Compa- so the example that I get yeah. that pe- people are in my DMs about is about workout wear. And so per- I purposely wore my um, made the label like workout set for this this morning. I came from Pilates um, because yeah. I know that they, they care. But I have people ask me like, well, it doesn't last as long as like my Lululemon. And so what do you say to that? Yeah. I mean, look, I'm not going to gaslight your listeners into and and tell them that organic cotton yoga pants last as long as polyester yoga pants. That's not true. I still have a ton of polyester workout gear because it doesn't die. And I feel bad getting rid of it. Even though like, like when I, if I run out of all my organic stuff, I'm like, Oh, okay. But the organic cotton stuff, it, it does, you know, these yoga pants, like they do start to lose a little bit of the knee and they get, you know, they might stretch out a little bit and, Um, and that's, that's true of a lot of natural fibers. You have to take care of your cashmere. You have to take care of like, of, you can't throw your wool in the dryer. You have to Mm. depill it. Sometimes it it takes care, but I think of it at this point, sort of like, um, yeah, if you never cook your own meal and you just get fast food and microwave dinners, um, you will save time. Um, but at the expense of your health. So it, it, it's just like everything in life. It's like, there's no free lunch, right? Your, your time saving stuff, or, um, you just, you have to decide what's important to you. And, um, if it's important to you that things last a really long time, then and more important than these other things that we're going to talk about, then, um, yeah, like get the polyester, but if you have health conditions, um, you're not going to be able to address them while you still wear polyester workout clothing. Yeah. And the way that you like describe it, I think in your book is just like, you know, you're, you're the, pl- you're wearing plastic to work out if you're wearing polyester. Right. And so then it's just like basically like melty or sweating. And then, you know, it, it, people get reactions to it just from the chemical coatings when they have, um, uh, like wicking properties, like they're chemicals. That's just another way, another way to say it. And the other thing I think is the issue, because obviously like they will eventually die, the clothing will die, but, uh, or the, the natural fibers. But I think a lot of people don't read the care label on their clothing. And so they're not taking care of it to your point. Like I, um, a, a lot of my stuff I hang to dry, which yeah. is yeah. arguably like very annoying. Cause it's not like the fast, uh, the, the fast way to do it. It's not the microwave. I actually don't own a, own a microwave, um, yeah. but it's it's just not the fast way to do it. And so I completely understand, but you're able to keep your clothing longer by usually not drying it in the dryer. Um, and then also just making sure you're caring for the clothing as it says yeah. to do. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So Thank, thank you for um, participating in the TIFF. We'll see what everybody says. Um, really, I just wanted to say that like, you can find what you're looking for. You can find and you will find it out there. So we're encouraging yeah. to do that and just make little steps. Um, I also have uh, polyester um, leggings still in my drawer. And something that I try to do when I wear them is making sure I'm wearing like cotton underwear just to like kind of yeah. combat that. Um, and, and take them off like immediately after you're done working out. Um, I think, you know, I, I thought that I had no health issues related to clothing. I was just documenting the health issues of other people. And then I've 
started wearing a lot more natural fibers over the past five years. And then um, it became really apparent to me when I would put on synthetic bike shorts to go to hot yoga, or I would wear nylon stockings all day that like, oh, I, my skin's having a reaction. It, I just thought I had butt acne, but it turns out it's like from this stuff. And so I used to do that thing that a lot of women do where like you come home from your yoga class and you like flop on the couch and you just like marinate mm -hmm. in everything. And, um, and I would kind of get itchy and I'd be like, Oh, this probably isn't good. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> like cut home and take your stuff off immediately. Um, and also you can like, you could also like throw it in the shower uh, like at the bottom of the tub when you're taking a shower mm -hmm. to rinse it out. And that can help also with the, like the smell that comes with polyester. But mm -hmm. that's another drawback of polyester is like, it's uh, after a while, it just smells bad all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little sour. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay. So love that. Let's start talking about your book, like the main reason of how I found you. And so I'm going to go to, and kind of like my background and then, um, will kind of like branch off into your book. So the reason I even reached out to Alden is because I'd finished her book and I was just blown away. I knew it was bad, but I didn't realize how bad um, it has gotten in our world with like all of our technology. I feel like with our advances, we've like, um, you know, have to like take two steps back as far as like the fabrics and the fibers and stuff that are man-made. Um, and so I had studied a lot. Like I knew certain things just from my degree in general, but I had never connected it to like my personal life. I worked in retail. So I worked in Delia's, if you um, remember the catalog. And mm -hmm. I had, we had, there was so, several like brick and mortar stores. And so I worked in the, one of their stores. And I remember, you know, like when the, it was always a great day when shipment day came um, because we got to see like what all the new apparel was to put on the floor. But it was also like, oh my gosh, my eyes hurt, like I'm sneezing. Um, it was like I had a cold just because of all the chemicals from the clothing. So I, mm -hmm. I knew that and I knew it was a reaction to, um, you know, what was in it. But um, when I, let's see, around 2020, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which is an autoimmune disease. And something you talk about in your book is how like, you know, everybody has uh, factors of, a, of autoimmune like in their system. And then sometimes it can just be turned on. And one of the things that like flips it on um, are these like chemicals and such so that we are found in our clothing these days. And so I was like thinking back um, like uh, over my life and I had just started a new job in May of 2019 and it was in a factory and like on the factory floor. And I'd worked in apparel like for uh, over like uh, 10 years at this point. Um, and I had been in buildings that had factories, but I was never on the factory floor. And um, the previous factories I was in, it was mainly like cotton. And this was not cotton. Um, they used, of course, like the, quote, vegan leather, which is Ugh. plastic. Um, yeah. And then just like other things with like printing and chemicals. And so I was on the floor the whole day. It was hot, um, which exacerbates the, you know, the chemicals from coming out and all that. And... I started having these symptoms that I kind of overlooked that ended up being um, ulcerative colitis. And so I, I push it off, push it off, push it off. Um, and then I finally got treatment and I'm still like trying to heal from that. But within your book, I was like, oh my gosh, around these, when these symptoms started is whenever I started working this job. And so I went to my, I had like my routine GI appointment and I brought it up to my doctor. And honestly, I figured she would be like, that can't, ha that's not possible. Like those cannot be linked. That's just coincidental. And she like looked me dead in the eye and said, I a hundred percent believe that's what like started your whole issue with ulcerative colitis because she'd seen it before. And it's not like really written about, and it's not really, you know, I'd say like studied in like that, like MD field, um, as a connection to that. But she was like, no, 100%. And I like got chills all over my body. And I just went to my car and I sobbed because I had lost my job. Like I was fired from that job only after I think almost three months of working there. And I never understood why. And I was like, I was God like pushing me out, like get out. You're sick. You're only going to keep getting sicker. And like, it, it was finally like, oh, 
I'm really glad I was fired from that job. Um, and so anyway, that led me to reach out to you. And then we had this dialogue back and forth about it. And it's just like insane. So with that, <laughs> would you talk a little bit about your book and like how you got into this very specific niche that I'm so thankful that you did? Well, I, before I talk about that, I just have to say I, I, I'm almost getting teary-eyed remembering because you posted these videos and it was so affecting to see the book prov- like affirm your experience and um, the experience of so many more women who it, it's just this really common story of people who work in the fashion industry and they get sick and because nobody's ever talked about how there are chemicals in clothing nobody makes the connection. Their doctors don't make the connection. They don't make the connection. And, um, I actually, so I, I've, I'm submitting the book, um, or my publisher is submitting the book to an environmental journalism award. And they were like, talk about the impact. And I actually talked about you, um, not by name, but just like the, the, somebody who like it helped make that connection. Um, and I hope I can hit fashion professionals before they get sick or yeah. when the symptoms first start popping up yeah. um, by putting or it the very out, least out giving them like, this is why you should care. Like, this is why it matters. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. So why did I get into writing this book? It, it, so I've been writing about fashion sustainability since 2011 and I got into writing about fashion sustainability because the food movement really changed my life. I had disordered eating and Michael Pollan and Food Inc. and all these other books coming out around that time completely revamped my relationship to food as well as um, just like my health. Mm -hmm. Um, And so in food, it matters where you get your food from, right? If you get it from the farmer's market, if you get it organic, um, if it's whole, non-processed, that's good for the environment. It's also good for yourself. So I started looking around and being like, well, probably matters where we get everything else. So I started writing about the whole spectrum of lifestyle, sustainable lifestyle stuff. Fashion became the main thing because nobody else at the time was taking it seriously. All the cool girls didn't want to hear about it. The glossies didn't want to hear about it. So I started Eco Cult. Fashion became my main, sustainable fashion became my main thing. Sustainable fashion started becoming really popular, but I was never able to make that connection between what we buy and how we ourselves are impacted. It's it's always been this thing where like, oh, like this invisible, more of this invisible gas might go into the atmosphere. And it there are rivers in countries that you're never going to see. And there are garment workers that you're never going to meet who are impacted by this. But it's just really hard to like keep that centered when you're, you just need a dress to wear to your friend's wedding you know, and you you just need to like buy affordable clothing for your kids. And it's just like, I just like, I I can't think about that garment worker right now. I just need to do this thing. Until um, in 2019, I got this call from a radio show and they were like, hey, can you come on and comment and talk about what is in the Delta airline attendance uniforms that is making them so sick that they're suing Land's End. And I was like, I don't know. Like I've never, I, 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 clothing has chemicals. Like I've never heard about this. Like I would be the person, but I don't know. Called around, nobody knew. Uh, so I was like, okay, um, I want to write about this. So I wrote a story uh, for Harper's Bazaar that was just very basic, just like, hey, here's some clues that like something's up. But I didn't talk about the airline attendants because that story was just so big and important it was like they were getting gaslit by their corporate employers this has happened at four different airlines um if you're interested in this which you should be like this is very detailed in her book and it just blew my mind so keep going I'm just, yeah just to yeah, plug I your mean, book again they were, <laughs> it's all in they there were so sick they were so sick it was it happened at alaska delta still happening at southwest and american airlines and hair falling out, um, completely disabled when they were like get on the plane. Um, chemical burns, uh, rashes, coughing, anxiety, racing heart, flu-like symptoms, um, anaphylaxis, like the whole get- period problems. Some of them eventually developed autoimmune diseases, like multiple, like multiple autoimmune diseases. Um, some of them developed um, skin cancer. Uh, it was just like everything, and so. My question was, what is in these uniforms? And 
is this also happening to normal people with normal clothing? And the answer to the first question is every chemical that you could think of, every type of chemical that you think of was in these uniforms, pesticides, PFAS, which is the Teflon chemical, forever chemical, lead, arsenic, uh, restricted dyes that are not supposed to be there, like everything you could think of, anti-wrinkle stuff, formaldehyde. And the answer to the second question is yes, yes. Pretty much every chemical that's on these uniforms is, except for the flame retardants, is on normal clothing. And we just wouldn't know about what's happening to us because we don't put on the same uniform every day and we can't talk to everybody around and say, um, and say like, oh, this is happening to you. This is happening to me too. Like, let's gather and, and get together and have a lawsuit. It's it's a lot harder. Because why would it be your clothes? Why would it be yeah, your clothes? Why? Like, yeah. but to, for the headline for um, if you're if you're not tracking, you're not familiar with um, the fashion industry. They switched from wool to um, like I think a lot of it's like polyester with the chemical coating to make it flame retardant. Which, by yeah. the way, as this is a parenting podcast, I was very specific. And if you look at like my website, I can link articles, but like I did not want their car, my kid's car seat to have the flame retardants. Um, and I didn't want it to be in their stroller either. So that was like really important for me. Um, and it it often is more expensive because natural fibers are more expensive in a lot of the time than in man-made. Um, what was the other thing that I did with them? I don't know. I, I, you've, oh, pajamas and, um, you know, I think maybe we're out of the point where it has to be a uh, flame retardant, but there was for a while, ki- any kid's item that was labeled as pajamas had to be flame retardant. And it was a safety measure. So like I get it, it was out of precaution, um, similar to like how all the couches in the United States used right, to have like right. flame, flame retardant, um, but it's literally just a chemical coating. And so I don't know. That's why a lot of the pajamas you see say <clears> – <throat> They'll say like snug fitting because that's like the the liability like catch right there. Like these are supposed to be snug fitting, and if they're not, that's kind of on you. Um, but I go for like cotton, which I actually have a question for you like later written down that I just saw this morning. But what are your thoughts on um, bamboo clothing? Oh, um, okay. Well, uh, yes, bamboo clothing <laughs> for the purposes of people who have sensitive skin or non toxicity is great. People who have sensitive skin, um, but the thing is, it's actually bamboo rayon. Yeah. So it, it's just like they they use a lot of. I have to be very clear about this. They yes. use a ton of very dangerous chemicals to turn bamboo into that soft fabric. All those chemicals are gone, um, are completely gone and not left on the fabric. So the fabric itself, um, this is not great for the textile workers, but it can be really good for and the environment. Yeah. yeah. But it can be really good for people who have sensitive skin or, or yeah. I just wanted to mention it because a lot of parents really love like bamboo uh, pajamas for their children because yeah. it ends up it stretches and so they can wear it longer. Um, yeah. but I re- I still remember when it was kind of like coming on the scene, like whenever I was in college, like over ten years ago, and a lot of it was like greenwashed because it's presented as this like end all be all. Yeah. And a lot of it you notice goes back into the water and the chemicals. So cool. Yeah. So if you like bamboo, cool. Just know that um I don't know. Some it of it's Im- better than others, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's not like created it's- equal. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, I mean, bamboo and rayon and viscose and stuff like they present a little bit of a problem for me because almost everything it's like, if it's bad for the garment worker, it's bad for you. Bamboo kind of breaks that rule. So, um, but I I will say I have good news, which is there are no flame retardants in kids pajamas anymore. Um, I did a story about this on eco cult. I interviewed experts um, like Dr. Heather Stapleton at Duke um, and, um, another chemical expert and, um, Stapleton said, like, we've been testing, we haven't found it. They changed the rules. So like, if it's not, if it's cotton, you're not going to find cotton pajamas because they just, they don't want your little girl, like running past an open, like a candle with the cotton pajama, especially if it's flannel, like touching the candle, but if it's snug, that's fine. Um, and, uh, and then like the poly, they can make naturally flame retardant structural polyester. So Mm. they don't have flame retardants in, um, 
on in and on the clothing anymore, which is great. So that's that's good news. Do you remember the year that that happened? Um, Ish? I think it was. I think it's been like. I think they just stopped using it over a decade ago because really, the, yeah, the CPSC changed their rule to be like, if you make a snug fitting, that's fine. You know what I'm thinking? Because because one of the places that I worked. At least in the beginning, which I started, I don't want to give too many details. Let me think. Hold on. Um, there was a time whenever we purposely did not call it a pajama because I, and I think what the stipulation was, was maybe the the place that was buying them. So the retailer maybe still required it. So I wonder if that was a trickle down um, effect because that was in the last, that was in the last, I'd say eight years that, that we did not call things like kids' pants, pajamas, because that triggered a a laundry list of stipulations they had to follow, including the flame, flame retardant. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's still really confusing because like the consumer uh, safe consumer safety and protection commission. Okay, whatever. Yeah. They um they like the, they, they just like they require that it's flame resistant from like a safety perspective Mm -hmm. and so the labels are kind of confusing to parents and I understand I totally understand it totally makes sense that when you see that like this conforms to CPSC um standards for flame retardancy or flame resistance you're like oh it's got like it's got flame retardants on it um but that's 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 not true they they Mm -hmm. achieve it using other other means Mm -hmm. I'm also just I'm thinking back right now because also like within your book I was remembering that she she takes you took like um you tested certain things like you bought certain things and again read the book it's good but I remember being like oh (laughs) the company I worked for like made that like made one of the things that you tested um which is just like funny and like full circle for me um but yeah that mm, yeah yeah so um Okay, I want to talk, keep talking about chemicals, but I also want to talk about fragrance, which is a chemical. And so um, I noticed in your newsletter, which a sidebar, I, you, this week in your newsletter, which you can subscribe. How do you subscribe to your newsletter? Uh, you can go to ecocult.com. And okay. Subscribe. It's great. Um, you should subscribe to the website and to the newsletter. But this week you talked about the Mara Hoffman closing, which is just yeah. – I was so sad about that. And if you are not aware, she um, is doing her like last – I think spring 24, she said, will be her, her last line. And she's just been like um, – a champion, if you will, of like sustainable fashion. So it's really sad when things close because again, like you said, people want to buy Timu, they want to buy Amazon, they want to buy all these like drop mm-hmm. ship from China. And I understand that like everything is expensive and is only getting more expensive. But I've always sat on the on the side of like, let me buy something that I'm gonna wear for like ever essentially and I still I have a problem not problem it's great but I have a connection to my clothing so I don't like to get rid of things but uh, I know like sometimes we have to purge but I like still have stuff in my closet from high school honestly like sorry a couple t-shirts my mom's like can you get rid of that I'm like it still works I wear it it's like 100% cotton from old navy t-shirt like it's fine um but it's just if you want brands like this to stay around we have to support with our dollar which is where where it was going with that yeah yeah it's just really sad because I feel like we've had the hollowing out of the fashion middle class along with yeah. the normal middle class so like people will throw down for luxury brands not because it's necessarily more quality or they're going to use it forever but just because like they want the logo or they'll buy the cheapest thing they could possibly find on Amazon. And it, there's no, there's like nothing left in the middle, which is just like, just like good quality, you know, and like pretty, like doesn't exploit workers or pollute the planet. You know, like there's not much left in the middle. And I was really sad about her because it, it was sort of like, okay, if she can make it work, like then, then, then we can, we can do this. And what I got out of that was just like, we, like, she and Timu shouldn't be allowed. And not because, you know, not because, well, there's a lot of reasons why they shouldn't be there's allowed. There's a lot like, of reasons. <laughs> but like, Please one of them it. is like, they're literally dumping cheap fashion on America. Like, they're not, they're not turning a profit. And they're undercutting any 
American brand that is trying not to be hellacious because people are like, well, I can find it cheaper on Amazon or I can find it cheaper on Shein. And then what's going to happen is we're going to be left with garbage, just straight garbage. Yeah. Thrifting, Um, not the same anymore. I would even say like there are some like I had stuff from like anthropology from like years ago and even like some of their stuff. I'm like, this doesn't feel like it doesn't last as like the quality is missing um, because we have to like cut costs and like compete with with she and and Timo and I have multiple issues with them for for lots of reasons. One of them is that like I hate how oftentimes they will just flat out copy a design and like you could say that all fashion is inspired from something, but when you're flat out like copying it, that's a problem for me. And to the point where like I considered like doing fashion law because I just loved um I like defending <laughs> and I just um it fascinated me. But the other thing that I learned in your book is that, you know, whenever they drop shit from China, they don't have to like go by any of like the chemical rules or anything. You can probably yeah, say that better, yeah. better than I can. Yeah. So there's this, they're trying to reform it in Congress. So like if there's, if people want to call their, their representative about this, like this is a really amazing, easy tweak, bipartisan tweak that we can make to make us keep us safer. Okay. Um, which is anything that is any shipment that's under a hundred dollars does not get checked or tariffed. So what these dropship companies are doing is instead of shipping over a shipping container full of clothing, which um, you know could, will be tariffed, they're like setting up distribution centers in Mexico or just straight drop shipping straight from China. And nobody is looking inside that package. It could be filled with razor blades and you you just like wouldn't know. So if your tween is ordering that something from one of those websites and like often people say like this smells like gasoline when they open it. And that's a really good indication that it is off gassing incredibly toxic chemicals into your home and into the air you breathe. And um, it's really unfair. It's really unfair to companies that charge a little bit more or are doing things the the right way. We're talking about clothing and fashion and the chemicals in that, but it also matters about the chemicals in your skincare. One of my favorite non-toxic, cruelty-free, clean brands for skincare is Primally Pure. I have been using them for almost 10 years now, and it all started with their deodorant, which is a great place to start if you're unsure where to begin. But since this is a clothing topic, I'm talking about my kids. I do want to say some of my favorite kids stuff as well. You can use code BGMAT on any and every primarily period purchase that you make. I'm about to go in and reorder the baby bar that I use in their bath time, and I love to follow it with their baby balm. Me personally, besides the deodorant, I love to use their body butter and it gives a nice natural scent from the ingredients that are included in it that doesn't give me a headache at all. So you can try out Primely Pure for your skincare and body care needs and use code BGMAD for a discount. Yeah. And that kind of leads into like what else I want to talk about, which is fragrance, which I have been, when did I first go like basically fragrance free? It's been a while, almost 10 years, I would say. Um, And it drastically improved like headaches that I had. Um, But to your point about like wearing clothes that were uh, more natural fibers and going back to your polyester, that's how I feel. And a lot of people feel about fragrance. It's like when they take it out, they're much more um, prone to feeling sick when they smell it. Like I, one time my, uh, Nick, my husband used a what's the floor cleaner thing? And it had a scent in it, like the little white things, Swiffer. Uh, And I was like, oh my gosh, open all the windows. And I like felt sick for a day because of like the Uh, smell. And our our clothing have smells. And when they come from from drop shipping, usually from China, they often have a smell. And if it's not gasoline, it's like this horrible, in my opinion, horrible like laundry scent that's like feels very chemically. And actually- this week I got a shipment or last week I got a shipment that I ordered from. I was confused because it's a made in the USA brand. Um, and so I emailed them. I was like, hey, just so you know, like I could smell this smell outside of the bag when it shipped and it still smells like it even though like I've had it out of the bag for a week and I ended up like exchanging a size um, on one of the things I bought. And so I was like, you can, you'll be able to smell it like when you get it back because it still smells like it. And they're like, oh my gosh, so sorry. And that was actually a fluke um, because when I got the exchange size back, like it didn't have a smell at all. Yeah, but I just, 
think to also the clothing that I've kept for years and years. Like, you know, at some, at one point I did use, um, fabric softener, which is bad for your clothes. Anyway, don't use it. Um, and you can still smell like the detergent on my clothing like years later, um, which is just insane of like how like bad it is. And if you're like, but why I like the way it smells I'm like, cool. You like the way it smells, but your body doesn't like what it's doing to you. It's an endocrine disruptor. It can mess up your hormones and give you rashes among other things. And why do you think like there's these laundry detergents on the um, out there that say like for babies and like, honestly, you should be using that too. Like we do not use a scented laundry soap. It should smell like nothing. That's the smell of cleanness. It smells like nothing. Yeah. Um, and I'll get off my actual soap box there um, and let you comment on, on fragrance, but it's just like something I'm very passionate about. Yeah, I mean, there, there have been studies that I, I cite in the book of the air that comes out of dryers when you're using mm. dryer sheets. Um, and also when you've used like fragrance detergent on the clothing and then you run it through the dryer and you have a dryer sheet and like there's just all of those different things combined together to create chemicals that are literally like banned by the EPA for yeah. being carcinogenic. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're just like breathing those mm-hmm. in. Um, and yeah, they stick to your clothing for a really long time. And so um, we recently did a little experiment on EcoCol, our sensitive skin contributor um, used gain on her mm. clothing uh, with a mask and everything. And then she managed to strip it out by soaking it in a vodka vinegar solution, um, which is really helpful. But it's just, you know, I, I really believe that fragrance, synthetic fragrance is a new smoking because it started to inhabit this this area where a lot, I think like one in five people, um, this is the number that keeps coming up for all this stuff. One in five people have a problem with fragrance and they might not say they're chemically sensitive. They might just say like, oh, I don't like fragrance or I have a chronic illness or it gives me a headache or whatever. Some people, their body just shuts down. They just can't be around it. And Um, I've heard from moms who several moms who've told me this really similar story where they're like a babysitter or a nanny comes over with a perfume and then it's like lingers and it sticks all over everything or like relatives do the same thing. And they're like, Hey, um, can you not wear perfume or fragrance? And those people are like, what are you talking about? I'm not wearing anything. And they're offended. Yeah. Or people are like, Hey, like, um, my son came home from his play date with a, like a debilitating headache. And I'm just wondering if like maybe the next time you cannot have your Glade plugins and people are like, uh, well, then just, he, then just don't send him over. Like, why would I, or like people are estranged from their family because they're like, can you please just like not burn scented candles at Thanksgiving so I can come and spend time with you. And their family members are like, you will pry my Yankee candle from my cold, (laughs) dead fingers. And it feels like smoking where it took a really long time to be like, it was like, literally it is killing you. And people would be like, like, I like, I get to smoke my cigarette wherever I want. And now we're getting to the point where like, we're at a point of the society where we're like, we can all agree that if you're going to smoke a cigarette, it needs to be 10 feet away from the front door. And I hope yeah. we get there. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing, this is just a side note, is like vaping annoys me so much, mainly because I don't, whatever you want to do, go do it. But I don't like it that they just think that they can vape anywhere, like where they wouldn't normally be able to smoke. And mainly yeah. also, well, I don't like it, but also I'm just like, my children are with me and I don't want them bringing the breathing that, like they don't need to like breathe in your cotton candy mess, okay? Um, yeah. Do it somewhere else You're where like it's a smoking section. containing synthetic yeah. fragrance yeah. strawberry stuff. Yeah. And I remember... Um, and I grew up in Texas, so like Bible Belt. I went. I grew up in a Baptist church, and I remember the the church I was in when I was little. In the very top of the big sanctuary, on like the second floor, the back left was a fragrance free section. I was like, that's dumb. Like, why would I ever? Like, who want, who doesn't want like fragrance? Like, that's silly. But now I'm like, thank you. Like, bef- ahead of your time that we had a whole yeah. like fragrance free section like over 25 years ago. Um, yeah. But it's just – I also, like, think back and cringe because I um, 
loved the smell of like Abercrombie and Hollister clothing. And I wasn't allowed to shop at Abercrombie, but I could shop at Hollister. But one time my uncle gave me a gift card for Abercrombie and he didn't know that my parents didn't let us shop there. But obviously they let us go spend the gift card. And I was like, I'm never washing this skirt. And can you please like spray some more of it on there? And then I'm just like, ugh. And even like walking past it in the mall, I'm just like, eh. like, no, thank you. Like, how is how is this yeah. even like still allowed? And I also I, I get like the idea of wanting to like smell good and I like smells, but um, I just don't really even like wear perfume. Do you wear any any fragrance? I know there's some on the market that are marketed as like safe. But yeah. do you wear any fragrance? Um, I transition to um, natural perfumes and they're mm-hmm. just they're a lot more subtle And then I just stopped because, um, I, like I started using, like, for example, I started using soap, like only on the the important bits, Mm -hmm. uh, 10, more than 10 years ago. And I stopped wearing perfume because it became really clear to me that, um, my friends don't notice and, um, and my husband prefers just my smell like yeah. as a human yeah so um I I much prefer it this way and I it's become it's become really clear to me the difference like I remember I had I wore a certain perfume through college it was like mm-hmm. my, was it Michael Kors blue or something yeah. and I was in a spinning class like a sweaty dark confined room spinning class and some in that class was wearing synthetic blue, like whatever that perfume was. And I was like, <sighs> you know, and it, I think it's, it's really, it's sort of like getting off a lot of sugar or getting off processed yeah. food where yeah. once you're off it, you're like, Whoa, I can't yeah. believe I didn't realize what that was doing to me. And you start to really be repelled by it. Yeah. Um, but there is like a, tra- there's a transition period where uh, you have to break that addiction. Yeah. Yeah, I just honestly can't. And also, hmm, this sorry, I just had like a, I'm like a squirrel or a dog with a squirrel. Um, <laughs> I don't wear them anymore. Whenever I could transition, like you said, I was wearing Skylar, which are I don't know if like I haven't looked into the chemical um, like balance of it, but they yeah. are marketed as like a cleaner, safer one. But I don't wear anything now. Um, just because to your point, I don't really need it. I have like lotion that has some essential oils in it, like barely, yeah. and those don't mess with me at all. But I really don't necessarily care about like this, the like the sense. I would rather just be like under the radar, like nothing. And I know like it's nostalgic. And I, I can even smell like when I go, go through a store, if I smell like Clinique Happy or was it Happy Heart also, they just like take me back to high school um, or like the fragrances yeah. that were like really in at that time. But it's just, it's just a no for me. It's, it's not important. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's one thing that you're like, oh my gosh, how is this even still allowed um, when it comes to chemicals, um, clothing or fragrance or whatever that our country still allows? Yeah. Okay. 6,000 foot view. At the federal level, there are no rules for what chemicals you could put on adult clothing and mm. and sell. Zero rules. Um, there are three chemicals that are banned only in children's products. Uh, out of tens of thousands of potential different chemicals that, that you we know put. about. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, I'm like, how is this allowed? Like you could, there's nothing illegal about putting something like chlordane, which is the pesticide that is so toxic. It's been banned since the eighties on clothing and selling it. Yeah. Like you've done nothing illegal. So uh, that's crazy. Also, um, clothing doesn't come with a, an ingredient list. Yeah. So if you have an, if you know you have a nickel allergy or a dispersed dye allergy or a formaldehyde thing, intolerance or all these different things that are in clothing, and you might know that because you might've gone and gotten a patch test to see what you react to if you're having trouble. Um, there's no way for you to know if it's in your clothing and to find out whether or not clothing has PFAS in it which is still allowed um, and it's carcinogenic, reproductive, toxic, forever chemicals, never breaks down, um, immune suppressant, uh, just the full gamut, uh, birth defects, all the things. 
Um, the only way you can tell is if there's a negative, like if the brand says we are completely fluorinated chemistry free, or we are completely PFAS free, mm-hmm. or uh, you might look at the brand website and they say we use a durable water repellent, or we're stain proof, or you have to do all this detective work. And that is wild to me. Absolutely insane. In your book, you go and talk about like all the azo dyes and it that also blew my mind. I was like, what? <laughs> like <laughs> how? How? And like my uncle is a chemical engineer and um he doesn't work in the field anymore. He had like a cl- chemical cleaning company. And I was like texting him about it. I was like, did you know about this? <laughs> <laughs> and he like did some like research and stuff for me, but I'm like, how is this, how is this allowed? And um, so we had a dialogue about it too. Um, but I think it's just like the more, you know, the more, you know about it. And like, I, I can't believe that either. Um, and, and like, I talked to my family about it. Um, and I, it's like kind of like a slow burn. Um, even like I've talked to them about fragrance for years and they're like, I know it's bad. I'm like, I'm not mad at you for it. Like you can put like my sister, not to expose her. Actually, I don't think she does it anymore. But there was one, what's the laundry detergent that's like called Diva or something? It's pink. Um, It's Uh similar to like when people would buy the Victoria's Secret uh, laundry detergent, like what that smells like. And she's like, I just use a good laundry detergent and I just do like a little bit of like the toxic because I like the smell. I'm like, (laughs) you might as well just do the whole thing that, and I'm not like mad at you for it, but I want you to know, like I couldn't keep quiet about it. And I'm not like in your face and judgmental and things like that, but I'm going to tell you like, I'll say like, um, my opinion that you didn't ask for just so you know, or where, like, I, just the more you know about it, I feel like the more, at least for me, I want to tell people about it so that they can make, um, these changes. And like the azadize was just something I never even thought of. And, and again, if it's not, if it's not affecting you, it is affecting the people who are making the clothing, which you should care yeah. about. Um, and then also a lot of times it can just build up over time. And then all of a sudden you don't have, you do, you can't tolerate it anymore. Like I think of, I had a friend who I used to work with and she um, would get the um, eyelash extensions, which I did for a period of time too, but she would do them and her eyes would just be really itchy because of the glue. And then one time she did it and her eyes swole up and oh um then she was like, well, maybe it was just like a one-off thing. And then she did it again. And her doctor was like, if you do it again, you could like go into anaphylactic shock just because you're, you've are you like imagine it as like a yeah. thermometer just like going up and you build up all these things over time. And then it People all of a sudden is like, it like it's, a, it's a rain barrel, right? Yeah. So like yeah. you're filling the rain barrel, you're filling the rain barrel, you're filling the rain barrel. And then it just takes a little drop yeah. for it to slosh over the side. Yep. Um, and there's like, there is science behind this that we're beginning to understand. So a lot of, a lot of allergy doctors or like conventional doctors don't really understand or recognize this because if you go in, they'll like test you, you'll be like, I have brain fog and I, you know, I have this and that, and they'll test you and they'll be like, nothing's wrong with you. Your blood yeah. panel's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way it works is, um, you've, you've sort of almost, it's almost like PTSD in the body where, um, like if you think of a soldier who's been uh, like almost killed in the, mm-hmm. in battle and then it's 4th of July and fireworks are going off yeah. and they are freaking out. Right. Mm-hmm. And you would never go to that soldier like, man, this is all in your head. Like you need to calm down and, and, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, just like stop being so dramatic. Yeah. Right. You're like, okay, something real happened to you. And even mm-hmm. though these fireworks are factually safe, for you, uh, we need to w- help you get past this. And so it's the mm-hmm. same thing with a lot of these chemical exposures where, and I go into detail in this in the book and it's mm-hmm. a really good, if you want to know how to talk to your doctor about this, like yeah. this is, this could be really helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, where you've exposed your body over time with building up or one big thing event happened. And so your mast cells, this is like what comes with mast cell activation syndrome, your mast cells, when they encounter a tiny, tiny bit of whatever that thing is, they freak out and they release all these things called cytokines and you get the inflammation and you get the brain fog and you get the rash and all these different ways that it can manifest. And what we're telling people is like, why are you so dramatic? Like, you know, it's just laundry fragrance or it's just like, this is, should be normal. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, you need to get that person out of that, um, 
that experience, get them safe. And then you can kind of start working on taming your limbic system and, and teaching your limbic system that we're safe and everything. But if we're continually like bombarding people with further bodily danger, they're never going to, their, their body's never going to get out of this space. Yeah. And I think it's really hard. And I think we're, we're learning more about like the invisible illnesses and, um, mm -hmm. Just for me with ulcerative colitis, there are days where I just feel very bloated and my stomach hurts, but I don't look like anything's wrong per se. I mean, I might have like a frown on my face because I'm uncomfortable, yeah. but at the same thing with these exposures and things like that, it's like you can't tell that something's actually wrong because it's not like they're wearing a cast and their arm is broken. Um, yeah. And so there's just, I don't know, something to always keep in mind is that you don't actually know what someone's going through um, yeah. and the invisible diseases and stuff to matter. Like I had a boss who I actually really liked as a boss, but they told me that they didn't believe migraines are real because they had never had one. <laughs> and I was like, well, I have migraines a lot. And at the time, like I, there was, I had started purging fragrance, but I hadn't done it all. And then I was still on birth control, which also gave me really bad headaches. And so like I had them frequently. Um, and so like I'd always feel bad, like saying like, I have a migraine, I'm working from home today. Um, but like I did. And um, yeah. I think like being believed or gaslit, as you said, like can be really hard, especially when you already don't feel well. Yeah, okay. exactly. And, and there is a, like, in case it wasn't clear, like there is a pretty straight line from sort of like in the book, I do just document all these stories where it was like, she got a rash and um, she felt kind of tired mm -hmm. and she ignored that or she went to the mm -hmm. doctor and her doctor said, their doctor said, Oh, there's like, no, it's not the clothing or, or like it could be this or it could be that. And they keep going and then it just gets worse. And then they develop an autoimmune disease and then that autoimmune disease gets worse. And like they're struggling and, you know, it, it, chemicals, environmental insults, chemicals are one of the ways you can trigger an autoimmune disease along with a virus. And that's well, why I, long COVID looks so similar to chemical sensitivity. But and to your point, like, again, she talks about in this, this in the book is like these flight attendants um, were having these issues. And of course, why would their doctor think that it was clothing? Because that really hadn't happened in like this, um, to this many people at once, like a controlled setting, if you will. Um, yeah. And so they would go back to work and like, how do you say like, oh, I have brain fog because that, that's what fragrance does to me. It does give me brain fog and I can't really do anything for like a day. Um, but then like they would keep wearing it because like they had to wear the uniform and it was like very debilitating to like sores on their body. And so it's not just yeah. like, a, oh, I can manage a little brain fog. Like it can lead to like something really, really bad. Um, if you don't like keep it in check or get out of that. Yeah. It's, it's a warning sign. Your body is like, Hey, Hey, pay attention. I don't like this. I don't like this. And if mm -hmm. you ignore that, it's, it's going to, it's going to get worse. Well, and even just like, I feel like with women's bodies, there's so many things that we're still like, our society needs to know as a whole of like how, like, I don't think that we were taught well, like this is, you know, our luteal phase and our follicular phase and all this and like all of our yeah. hormones. And so I have a really great OB and um, she's a hormone specialist. And that's actually how I found her as I was looking for somebody um, uh, who could help me with my hormones. And she tells me all the time, not all the time, but we've had these discussions of just like, she's on these pages with these other doctors who will come on and be like, oh, they think it's their hormones. Ha ha. I love her. Like what a joke. And it's like, no, like it is the hormones. Like it's, they can't really articulate it and it blood work doesn't always show it. And you need to make sure you're yeah. doing the vaginal ultrasounds too, to like look at everything and keep it in check. But like, it's not in your head. Um, so if you need to find a doctor that, that can help you, like just keep looking, they are out there. That's my point. Yeah. That. And the, this other thing is like, I, I'm at the age where all of my, I'm, I'm in my mid to late thirties. And so suddenly all of my friends are trying to save their eggs or trying to get pregnant and really struggling. And, um, none of them, I like have conversations with them and all like the party line from these fertility clinics and these fertility doctors, cause they, they get paid no matter what is, um, well, there's nothing you could do except pay us a ton of money and go through this incredibly invasive procedure over and over and over again until you hopefully find success. And there is something you can do. You can reduce your exposure to yeah. endocrine disruptors in your environment. Yeah. And again, she talks about, not to keep plugging the book, but she talks about this in the book of like the things you can actually do um, or people have done and experienced like changing like your underwear, just changing that out. And I, yeah. I think you like this brand too, but my favorite underwear is Subset. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I, 
Am I, no, I'm not wearing subset right now, but yes, subset's great. Yeah, it used to be um, go go by Nikki, and then they rebranded to subset, and subset is my favorite. And I feel like when I talk to people about underwear, they're like, "But does it have like all the kinds?" And I would say subset has like if you want a thong, they have that. I like a high rise yeah. situation, and they have that <laughs> too. Yeah. It does it right up. It's actually comfortable. Those are my skin, personal skin favorite. Skin also, skin organic also makes like oh. very sexy cotton oh, underwear to look and at all the different profiles. Yeah, I really, <laughs> I really like them a lot. Um, Are, yeah, this is this is. <laughs> This might be TMI for people, but we're leaving on a trip tomorrow morning and I was packing and my husband was like packing my clothes for me and I had put out on the bed last night and I had packed, I had put out the underwear I was bringing and he was like, oh, are you going to be on your period? And I was like, I wear those types of underwear every day. Like maybe it was just like that specific one because at one point I did have like the period underwear, which, oh my gosh, we could talk about that too, yeah. about like the PFAS and all of the stuff in those Um now, like, I feel like I was having a conversation the other day of, like, I feel like in regards to periods, I just, like, went back to, like, my seventh grade self or sixth grade self um, to where, like, I just try to wear organic cotton pads all the time. Like, I don't really um, like to use tampons. And if I have to, I'll use a menstrual cup. But I'm, like, give me my granny panties and my organic <laughs> cotton pads. Um, but anyway, there's your underwear suggestion. I'll to, what did you say the other one was? Skin? Uh, skin. Yeah. Skin. Okay. I'll have to check that one out. Um, so dyes and the chemicals are like, why are the, is your answer to like, why are we still doing this? What's something you're like, finally, is, are there any, um, is there any like favorite advancement that we've made in this area that's for the better? Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say I'm very proud of New York and California because both of them pass legislation to ban PFAS from mm -hmm. everyday apparel mm -hmm. uh, by 2025 and then performance apparel like hiking and skiing and stuff by 2028. Yeah, which and, is a whole another topic, but yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is super exciting because like I said, PFAS is the devil. Um, I, I believe it's a new lead. It's like the kind of thing where we're going to be continuing to find it until... 50 years from now, it's everywhere. Um, it's so toxic. It's it's terrible in all ways. Um, but the other really exciting thing about this is New York and California together represent the like two like some of the two largest economies, not just in the United States, but in the mm -hmm. world. And so um if they're banning it, like the rest of the states just get a free ride, which is really exciting. Um, Vermont, also where I'm I'm talking to you from is also um, about to ban um, PFAS and apparel as well, which like yeah. com companies don't care about Vermont. But anyway, it's exciting. <laughs> um, so that's really exciting. And then also what's exciting about that is you can't be sure as an apparel company that there's not PFAS in your clothing unless you know who is making your clothing yeah. and what they're using and who's dyeing it and you're testing it and doing all these things. So um, while they're being legally forced into making sure there's no PFAS in any of their apparel, they're probably going to have to revamp their whole chemical management program and testing program. And when that happens, they're going to start realizing, like, oh, there's lead in this or like, oh, there's pesticides in this or phthalates or whatever. And so I think it's going to push the whole industry forward. Yeah. Um, speaking of things that California banned, I, they banned Skittles because of the dye. I'm like, take the Skittles. We don't need the dye. Like people are like, oh, my Skittles. I'm like, no, <laughs> we don't need the dye. Take the dye out of the food. Like, oh, yeah, I think back totally. to, um, <laughs> I was thinking the other day because my kids love ketchup and I love ketchup, but like there was that time I forget maybe it was like late 90s or early 2000s where it was cool to have like the different colored ketchup so I remember there being like purple ketchup I'm like <laughs> why did oh, we do God. that it yeah. like it's not just in our clothes it's in our fo food too and like I don't care if like my meat looks pretty or whatever like don't put it in there I don't want it in there it also bugs me out the wazoo that they put it in like medicine and like, I don't want red 40 in my medicine or my kid's medicine. And so yeah. we do try to live like a all around die free life, but I'm not to the point, I'm not like where I won't let them have it if like they're at a party yeah. or something like that. Cause I don't want to have like a, I want to be careful about their relationship with like food and things like that. Um, and they're not necessarily old enough to where I can be like, this is why we do it, you know? Um, yeah. but it's just all around something that's important. Um, it can be overwhelming. Where should where should someone start right now if they want to change one thing about the clothing that they wear specifically? If they don't know yeah. like, what to do, where to start. Yeah. So I would say don't 
don't throw out your entire closet. Uh, that's not going to be effective. Um, but I will say is you can start with the things that you wear close to your skin um, all the time uh, and that you sweat in. So start with your underwear and your bras, uh, your pajamas. Do you have a favorite bra? Brand? Do I have a favorite bra? Um, well, so I'm I'm a small boob. Well, I'm uh-huh. like a B cup. So yeah. take my recommendations with a grain of yeah. salt because I'm totally fine with like the non-wired bralette. Yeah, and Subset so, does have those. I have a couple of those. Yeah, but. and so does Skin. And like, so um, we do have um, a guide to lingerie, um, and we also have a guide to sports bras, oh. natural fiber sports bras mm-hmm. on Equal Cult, and okay. our. Contributors, um, one of our large chested contributors tested some of them. And so mm-hmm. um, uh, her, her, their favorite was, um, uh, and also my favorite now is um, Icebreaker. Mm, they make a really good, yeah. like supportive, structural merino wool mm. bra. And if people don't know about merino wool, it's basically like a performance cashmere. Yeah. Um, it's very soft. It's not going to give you the itchies. Um, and, uh, it's sweat wicking. You can like hang it up to dry if you're traveling mm-hmm. and not wash mm-hmm. it and it won't, it'll waft all the scents off of it. So, um, that's really great. Um, and then you can also get, um, cotton, you should get cotton leggings because they found BPA in polyester spandex workout yeah. clothing and sports yeah. bras and everything. Um, cotton socks for sure. Cause you're sweating mm-hmm. in them and sweat can draw out, whatever is in the plastics or whatever is mm-hmm. in those performance chemicals. Yeah. Um, and uh, try, so, and so do those first, like as you're buying new things, uh, just focus on getting natural fibers. Um, also avoid anything that is marketed with performance and promises. So if it's uh, easy care, wrinkle free, stain proof, um, water resistant, sweat wicking, it can go either way. That can be just like a, oh, the fabric is sweat wicking, or it can be a, a you know, a, a finish. But if if it has a brand name, like Lululemon is really bad at this. And I'm not saying Lululemon is especially toxic, but they like you're like, what's in this? And they're like, it's titrixinate or like whatever, like some fancy thing. That just means it's a. That just means it has a chemical finish or it's a it's a synthetic fiber. So if it has a marketing name, two things you should know about that. It's synthetic. It might have a chemical finish and they're making you pay more for it because they're like, it's super fancy and we're the only ones who can do it. Um, You can't really brand name and patent and call a trade secret a organic cotton. Um, (laughs) So don't pay more for stuff that will make you sick. I'm essentially saying. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. Let's start just, I think a way to even like take it a step further is just like, be aware of what's in it. You kind of said it, but like, be aware of what's in your clothing. Read the, the, um, not the ingredient label, the, uh, fiber content legally. Yeah. They, they have to put that there, but to your point, they don't have to put like the chemicals that's considered a right, trade right. secret. And those, those, if you're like, Oh, but I like the wicking, it's going to wash off. <laughs> you know, yeah. if they have yeah. like some special thing on there, it's going to wash off at some point. And if you're like, but why does it matter? Because it's going in the water, <laughs> it's going to affect something. And if, if you're not drinking yeah. it, no, it's going it, in the it's ecosystem. Going in your house. Yeah. Like it, here's the thing, like there's, there's a ton of research in, in the book. So Dr. Heather Stapleton at Duke got into this because her own kid had a rash reaction to a shirt. And a lot of her research focuses on house dust. So they'll go to a bunch of different households of all socioeconomic status. And they'll, they'll be like, what, like what's, what's in, what's in the house dust and they'll test it. And they find flame retardants. They find polyester, they find um, dispersed dyes, which are known immuno and skin sensitizers. They find all of this different stuff in there. And so the PFAS. So if you bring a stain resistant polyester rug into your house, all of those microfibers are breaking off and then you're breathing them in and you're eating them. Um, with and food. if your kids are crawling on the floor, they're getting right into yeah. it. Like <laughs> there's a reason why this study just came out this past weekend showing that they, they tested a bunch of testicles of human men yeah. and, and dogs for some reason. So first they tested dog <laughs> testicles and they were like, whoa, there's a ton of microplastics in there. And they were like, well, what about humans? And they were like, oh, there are microplastics in all of these yeah. testicles from men. 
how did they get there? Um, ingestion um, and, and breathing them in. Not to just be like, we can't have any nice things, but also think about it in your kitchen. You know, I don't know if you've probably seen, I don't know if our listeners have seen it, but like the devil we know, which is about Teflon in the pans, like just mm-hmm. use, mm-hmm. Um, just don't use them. <laughs> and then the ones that like have a coating that's, that's non-toxic, like it's still a coating. Like, right. and if you scratch if it, it's going to come off. If it's ceramic, great. Great. Like ceramic is awesome. Ceramic is very, very safe. So like get your ceramic dishware, get your ceramic um, uh, nonstick. That, that's fine. That, that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy because like you see all these like uh, detoxify your kitchen things and they're like, don't have Teflon. And it's like, okay, but like, you know, it's on your ski gear, right? Yeah. And it's coming off into your home and then it's getting yeah. into your blood. Yep. 100%. 100%. Um, so what are your favorite resources? Obviously your website, if you want to talk about that um, and your book. Yeah. But... Um, so the book, uh, the book has so much more. If you have questions, they're probably answered in the book. If they're not answered in the book, um, and, and the book is more than just like, Hey, by the way, like, let's scare the Jesus out of you. It also has resources. Yeah. Um, how you can talk to your doctor, how you can understand what might be happening to your family. It's supposed to be empowering, right? Like if you're eating organic and you're, um, you're eating organic and you're buying wooden blocks for your kids. Um, this is another way in which, for example, if your kid has eczema, like the book yeah. has all these resources to help you with that. Um, and then if the answer is not in the book, uh, you can go to ecocult.com, E-C-O-C-U-L-T. Mm-hmm. And we we're always putting out new content, new shopping guides, mm-hmm. new explainers um, uh, about all of these different things, which is like Google Ecocult and whatever your question is. And we probably, we probably have it there. Yeah. And um, you, it's a subscription, yes, for the website? Um, yeah. It depends on what you're looking for. So okay. most of the shopping guides are free, but if you're looking for deeper health explanations, um, those take a lot of time. And also we're trying to get away from making all of our revenue based on brand advertising, because then we're just like that influences the kind of coverage and who we're covering. And so for example, like we did this, we did this whole investigation into packed because yeah. like a lot of people buy packed because they think it's the safest, most organic and everything. And people were telling me readers, friends that they were having serious allergic reactions to packs. So we scrubbed packs from the website and we did this investigation. We were like, here's what we found. But when, in doing that, we lost out on a ton of revenue. And so if, when you are, when you sign up for a membership, a health membership, which I want to say is like six, seven dollars a month. Um, you're basically getting information that will hopefully save you from buying hundreds of dollars of crap stuff that will send you for your, um, your EpiPen. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I knew that I wanted you to, to get into like the why and like just to say that you're a trusted source because I think a lot of magazines, brands out there, you know, they are, um, they treat the revenue as the master, if you will. And so, you were making a lot of like affiliate commissions from Pact, yeah. Um, so that yeah, affected was, yeah. that affected um, your revenue stream, and like you said, these take hours. And like I don't even I write um, like when I do personal like reviews for my blog, I it takes a long time, and I'm not even diving into like chemicals and things like that. And so I'm right. completely aware of like how long it takes to do. And so again, this is like a new subscription less than, um, you know, like a TV subscription, you pay it. Like, I think that it's worth it. Um, and so I just wanted to speak as to why, if you go on and you're like, wait, I have to subscribe to like, get this. I'm like, yeah, because they have, they have to further the research. So, um, and and, and just to prove prove it's non-bias. Yeah. We, we pay a fact checker as well. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, and we're also not making money on like monetizing, yeah. Um, misinformation, which also yeah. can happen from the other direction where people are just like scaring the bejesus out of you in order to get more eyeballs in order to earn revenue yeah. from TikTok. So we're, we're just like, like we're, we're trying to make information that really helps people. And hopefully you will earn it back immediately because uh, suddenly you are like, you're not, you didn't buy something, some plastic thing from yeah. Um, Amazon because an influencer was like, this changed my life. Did you, I don't know if you saw it, but I forgot who even posted it, but it was like a meme of, 
um, it was a picture of like the toothpaste that has the the microplastics in it. Um, and the, the verbiage on it was like, remember when they told us these were cool, like micro targeted microbeads and it was in <laughs> toothpaste and it was in like the, um, the face wash. <laughs> and just to think back yeah. like how they like not tricked us, but essentially, I don't know that they were doing it maliciously, but like tricked us into like putting plastic on our face to clean it and like in our mouth to clean our teeth. Yeah. Like, I had a yeah. good little chuckle and I was like, oh my gosh. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you have any other like favorite resources or are those the ones you go to your book and the um, website? Yeah. What are my other favorite resources? Um, or like Instagram accounts you like to follow that have um, similar, similar messaging? Oh, that's a really good question. I try not to spend too much time on social media. Okay. Good. Um, <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I try to get my information from like I like I have subscriptions to like New York Times. Yeah. Um, and like other like trade journals and stuff to to pass that. I'm sure I don't think I, I, I try to take all of that stuff and like distill it down into Got like, it. easy, accessible yeah. layman's terms. Um so other other resources um, that are really good for this information, um, like Manga you, Bay does a lot okay. of this stuff, um, and they're a nonprofit, so they're they're great. Um, Washington Post does a lot of stuff, though they're not as accurate as I would like. Um, and New York Times, and um, there's also um, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up because there's a woman I follow who does mm -hmm. holistic homes, which is something oh. I've been really interested in yeah. lately. Um, actually, uh, I want to say it might be just like holistic homes, but let me, mm, let me okay. look her up. Cool. Um, yeah. And while yeah. you're looking that up, I just wanted to say like, it's, this also comes like, even from the book, you can tell it's not a judgment zone. And like she even said at the beginning, like she still has some like the polyester, like leggings. It's not like a shameful judgment. Like now, you know, and you can like shop better, smarter. You don't need to throw away everything. Just start making like the little changes. Um, and you can go from there. Uh, don't, I, it can be overwhelming, but, mm -hmm. um, it's not from like a judgment. You're like a terrible person or whatever standpoint. It's just no, more like no, because empowering. Like nobody knew this. Yeah. Nobody, nobody knew this. It's been hidden really effectively from people. Um, okay, so holistic homes by Christine. Okay, um, she does a lot of work on homes, and I, I, obviously the the overlap is. Mm -hmm. is is really really good um and, and there's a lot of overlap between like what rugs you buy what sheets you buy um mm -hmm. like what paints you're using and and you know yeah. curtains and stuff and all all of the same cleaning products and whatever yeah um what is your favorite sustainable brand of the moment it doesn't have to be ever but is there any like maybe that is newer to you or something you're really loving right now of like what's your favorite right now Oh, right now. Um, Not like a favorite child, but like, because we love them know, all and they're all doing great. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. I'm just going to go with the easy answer. And I'm going to say, I really adore St. James and um, they do have like synthetic stuff, but they're really big. I'm wearing it right now. And the reason why I'm recommending this is because like these shirts last forever. We were talking at the top of the podcast about like, you know, like, oh, like, they don't last as long. It is weird how long these shirts last and they mm -hmm. are fit for every occasion. I like every time I go on vacation, I always make sure to pack one of these shirts because like they're long sleeve, but they're lightweight. Mm -hmm. They, mm -hmm. they make me look good or I go to the beach or whatever. Yeah. And they're, they're employee owned their heritage designated heritage brand in France. So they're, they're not mm. exploiting anybody. It's cotton. Um, it's yeah. I, I say like, Go store if you want to support a good brand that makes quality product that's going to last a long time. St. James is the way to go. Love, I'll have to check them out. I don't know if I've looked at them before. Um, so let's kind of like recap some tips, just because I know it's a lot of information, great information. So we said like check your clothing labels and look for natural fabrics as a bare minimum. Um, she listed some. Uh, brands that like take into account their dyes and things like that, like H&M and Target that you can find um, things there. She goes into more in her book. <laughs> um, you can swap out like laundry detergent for like no fragrances. Um, she said, start where you spend most of your time. So is that your underwear? Is that your sheets in bed? Those type of things to where you can um, make the fastest impact um, now and you can gradually do it over time. Um, 
any other like quick tips? Yeah. For the love of God, don't buy ultra fast fashion. Just don't. <laughs> Just don't. It's dangerous. It's it's garbage. Um, if if you've never heard of the brand before and you're only seeing them advertise on social media and they look kind of sketchy, don't do it. If they're only on Amazon and they have one of those like those gibberish names where they smush together a bunch of words, don't do it. Um, they've found, uh, they've found like high levels of lead in children's shoes sold by those like brands on Amazon, Timu, Shein, Shein's, they found lead and phthalates in their children's products. Um, just don't do it. Just don't do it. And I, I've, I'm now like circling back cause I've, we're having such good like dialogue, but the reason why I brought up your newsletter when we were talking about Mara Hoffman is because I saw on that um, newsletter is where you shared like how to strip your clothing of that smell and things like that. And I just yeah. want to say like what I bought that smelled like the, um, I'm trying to be vague on purpose because I've had a conversation with the brand about it. Um, but the, the clothing that I bought that had the smell, like I've already washed it once and the smell is still there. So okay. the chemicals are definitely still there. So there's ways, there's ways to like strip it and things like that, but it's better to just try to go an alternate route altogether. Mm-hmm. Um, because this is a parenting podcast, do you know of any or have any favorite of the moment like baby brands that yes. um, kind of like think like-mindedly? Yes. Um, so I I actually talk about the story of the founder of Cran Organic in the book, C-R-A-N-N. Um, yes. She started her brand because her son had such terrible eczema that he started bleeding and she was doing all the right things. Um, And finally, when he was able to use his words, he was like the clothing. So Mm -hmm. um, Crayon is really good. Also um, the pajama brand, uh, I will tell you what it is. Hannah Anderson. Oh yeah. Actually, Mm -hmm. Okotech certified, um, lots of natural fibers. They have super cute stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. I've literally bought pajamas for my husband there, even though we don't have kids. So um, I really like their stuff. And then we have a whole other list on Eco Cult. Yeah. Booty makes bamboo Mm -hmm. kids clothing. That's good. Fair, fair child. There's like Mm -hmm. little, little ones, Finn and Emma. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, She already said H&M. So that's a good one. And they have like baby up to like kids. Um, Target. uh, Target, like the Cat and Jack is one of their in-house labels. Um, I'm not sure, and you can shoot me down and say, no, don't do that one. But like when they were babies, I would buy like their organic cotton from Bird's Bees. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I will say I have really sad news um, for everybody, which is organic cotton doesn't mean it's non-toxic. Right. (laughs) Right, definitely. But I feel like if they're trying to start somewhere and they don't know where to look, I feel like that's usually a good indicator or no? No, no, mm. no. It, 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 it's like or, or, the organic cotton certification is very easily gameable and fraudulent. Um, it's more about like what they use in the fields, which actually doesn't really matter for the final product. So what people should look for is Okotex. Yeah. O-E-K-O-T. But, I, but don't you talk about how that can, it has to be retested, right? Didn't you talk about that in the book? So it's oh, Okotex isn't perfect, but it's the best we have. Yeah. So if people want to know what to look for, Okotex, blue sign. Yes. And they, they actually have the I I've purchased that at Walmart before. So they do have it places um that are yeah. affordable. I guess where I was going with the cotton is like I would rather them buy a Burt's Bees cotton than like a polyester something. Is like oh, for sure. A, di- a better direction um, to buy like the natural fiber. If you're like, I don't even know where to start. That is a good place to start and you can yes. only get better. Um, the one, Ocotex, natural it's, fiber. Yeah. Yes. Um, and usually the Ocotex has like a green tag or something on it also. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's like, I remember um, <laughs> taking a nutrition class and um, – them telling me like you want to look for like a whole grain bread and they talked about subway this was like over 10 years ago but they were like you know i tried to ask subway if if they had um if it was like a hundred percent and they were like maybe but it's like if you have a hundred percent something you're gonna say it like it's it's marketable so it, yeah. we knew that subway didn't have the hundred percent whole wheat bread but if someone says something says a hundred percent cotton again you know yeah that that's what they have. And it's going to say, it's going to say like, if it's Okotex, like they're going to, it's like, I know I can, I can yeah. see it on like the H&M site. It's like even listed in like the description because it's something yeah. people look for. And so yeah. um, they're going to say it if it is. And if it doesn't say it, it's not. Um, yeah. I will also say, again, this isn't like 
like she said, like you want to look for Ogotex, but Gap also has some um, organic cotton that I like um, as far as like the hand feel and things like that. Um, also, like we're in the middle of potty training and so uh, we do cotton underwear and that was surprisingly hard to find, like 100%. Um, and so I know like some of like the underwear brands that I, that uh, for sure the equal Holt list is like has stuff, but like I have trouble, I've had trouble finding, um, like kids stuff that they like that is, is like gonna, it not hold up as in last, but like, I don't know, there's some cotton even that I've tried that I don't like cause it doesn't, the elastic or whatever that, yeah, um, yeah. goes around my waist. I personally don't like, which is another thing to think about is like the trims <laughs> that are included in like the clothing can have the chemical in it. And then the, um, the actual garment, like fabric may not. And so just, again, keep, <laughs> be vigilant and like keep aware of like, if something isn't feeling good, like just know like, oh, this could be from like where it is around yeah. my armpit or like elastic. Um, let's see. We already talked about bamboo. Yeah. Again, I'll list, I'll list um, Eagle Cult on the show notes so you can check it out and see like the massive, massive uh, resource that they have worked so diligently on that you can check out. But thank you so much, Alden, for coming on today. Can you just tell us everywhere that we can find you, your book, everything? Yeah. So, so you can find To Die For everywhere you buy books. So, And also there's an audio book, which I read yeah. myself and mm-hmm. a digital book. Um, you can find Eco Cult has a ton of resources and then you can mm-hmm. find my freelance work. I write for mm-hmm. a bunch of different places like New York Times and um, Wired at aldenwicker.com. Mm-hmm. And for Instagram, we can find you at ecocult.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm also on TikTok under Alden Wicker. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate the time. And I'm so glad we got to, we've chatted before, but nothing like face to face. So I'm so glad. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule, especially after a holiday weekend to come and chat with me. And maybe we need to do a part two because I feel like there is uh, such good stuff that we talked about. So I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you, Lauren. This has been wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for going with us. See you next time. Gotta wash those butts together It's a trip, but we'll guide you through With tips and tricks for boys and girls too